Uh, we're on the sidelines of the World Economic Forum in Manila. With us is the CEO, a, a man who's championed open skies policy, Tony Fernandez from Malaysia. And I didn't say CEO of Air Asia. <laughs> let me, let me, founder and CEO. Tony, it is good to have you with us. Good to be here. Your impressions right now of the World Economic Forum. Well, you know, I was always a skeptic of these kind of forums um, in the past but I've become a bit of a convert really because it's amazing how many people can meet and, and uh, we've been using this forum actually to champion ASEAN and to get the private sector view of ASEAN. So it's been very good. Uh, we've had a couple of very really good sessions. Uh, I always find the Philippine government so open anyway and so approachable that uh, I find it a very positive couple, couple of days. What is stopping open skies? I think uh, I, I'm using this buzzwords. Uh, right now, governments have to put national interest first and vested interest second. Okay. Um, and even the vested interest should really look at it and say, hey, would I just benefit from an 80 million market or could I benefit from a 700 million market if it was open? So that's why they got to balance out. Um, but uh, we're, making, we're making good progress. You know, you told me 10 years ago there'd be an ASEAN economic community around the corner. And even the thought of open skies, I would have said now. Nah. And I'm the eternal optimist. So we're moving forward. Needs a little bit more of a push. Yes. And um, then I think we'll get it. ASEAN Economic Community by December 2015. What does that mean for you? Oh, big for me. Um, a lot of things. I mean, it moves towards. Uh, economic integration, it moves towards maybe one airline for us, it moves towards being able to put planes wherever we want. It hopefully means that there's a freedom of labor movement so that we really have efficient use of resources. Filipinos may be fantastic in one part of the world, they may be in excess, we yes. could use them in another part of ASEAN um, you know, without 50,000 work permits, etc. Yes. It means reducing the cost of business. Correct. Um, so it's not going to be overnight. I was going to say that is the promise from the yeah. 2007 agreement, but how far yeah. along are we to getting there? Well, I think we're a long way to getting to the perfect scenario, but hey, we're on the, we're on the taxiway. That's a big step. I don't think, you know, five years, six years ago, it was a pipe dream. There's a disconnect between what private industry won and what government are pushing. And that's what the message we gave today, uh, to try and close that disconnect. But... Um, Could you describe that disconnect? I think politicians sit there and have lots and lots of meetings and sign lots of declarations and stuff. But implementation is is maybe not as effective. So everyone says, we're going to do this, we're going to do this, we're going to do this. Correct. And then they don't talk to the guys on the ground to really know what needs to be done. So... Um, and e even the communication of what it is, a recent ADB report said that only 77, set that 77 percent of businesses who would have benefited from the FTAs don't even know they exist. Yeah, exactly. And then, I mean, I, I said that in my session today that what does ASEAN mean to any people, any person out on the street in my party right now? Probably zero. Right. Right. Um, ASEAN has to raise its consciousness. It has to raise its awareness level. It has to wear its branding. I mean, a simple thing that I've been pushing which has got zero traction, by the way, but we have something called the Sea Games. Okay. Why is it not called the ASEAN Games? Yes. Right? Um, we have an amazing film industry. We don't have an ASEAN Film Awards, really, that is truly ASEAN. Right. Or an ASEAN Film Festival. You know, we're, we're, pushing, we're going to be pushing a lot of content on our planes. There's some great Filipino movies. There's some great uh, Indonesian movies. And translation tools products such as Vicky and stuff have enabled uh, these films to be viewed by, by a wider audience. We should be pushing that. Right. Imagine to a Filipino film director, he's selling to 80 million, he could be selling to 700 million. So what's stopping this? Uh, stopping this is, um, I think, people having a bit of vision. I think this vested interest versus national interest, because Let's say the film industry, you might get guys who want to sell Filipino movies to a Malaysian TV station, the Malaysian film industry would say, no, no, block it. And that might happen reversal. Correct. So governments have to be strong. I think my Minister of uh, Trade made a very good statement just now and said, we may not be able to do everything, let's pick three or four industries and go for it, you know, and really open it up um, and, and see the results. Success will lead to more people wanting to do more. You're going into this 
regardless of the problems right now. And actually the companies that will go into an, a one ASEAN community will run risks of having laws change as they're, as, even if, after they're already there. I yeah, think. no, I don't think, I mean, I, I was in the ASEAN Economy Zone way before it even came up. I said 12 years ago I was going to build an ASEAN airline and people thought, what the hell is he talking about? We put ASEAN on our planes, we painted the ASEAN logo. On our annual reports, we had girls from every single country. Uh, so, look, I take a different view sometimes. You can wait for things to happen or you can affect change. Uh, sometimes that pisses people off and I regularly do that. Um, but I think you can sit on your backside and wait for change or you can go out there and make change yourself. So, it's a bit of a... Fantastic. Your last thoughts? My last I'm looking at Borokaya in the Afghanistan and um, here's a classic case of what needs to be done. I'm 50 years old. I've never been to Warakai, and until recently, it is the greatest place in the world. That's what airlines such as AirAsia will, will open up and make the world smaller. Anyone who goes to Warakai is going to say this is the most beautiful place in the world. It is. It really is. I've never seen sand like it. I've never seen sea like it. Uh, and I've been to some pretty cool places. Yeah. Um, so the challenge now is to make ASEAN smaller, is to make ASEAN one place mm -hmm. and to give the people of ASEAN the real benefits of being someone in ASEAN, which I think they don't see yet. Tori, last question. Why were you so certain that ASEAN would stand together as a whole so that you started so... I wasn't. I took a risk. But uh, I took a risk because I saw youth. I'm very involved in the social media side. I was in the music industry. And I thought, we're going to have a whole generation who don't care what creed, color, race you are. They enjoy being together, they enjoy meeting new cultures, they enjoy traveling, you know, they want to work in different places, they want to study in different places. And so I said, I don't care what the politicians do, we'll enable that. And uh, that's where we went. You bet for the future. Tony Fernandez, thank you thank so you very, very much. much. We've been speaking with Tony Fernandez, the Maverick, the visionary CEO of AirAsia. I'm Maria Ressa for Rappler. Thank you for joining us.